All right, guys, we are back. We're on to our next unit. So our next unit is all about solutions, okay? So we have uh, kind of an illustration here, um, but then we have our vocab down at the bottom, okay? So our vocabulary here, we're gonna wanna know these, okay? So as we go through, please pay special attention when we get these vocab words, okay? On the next page, all right, we have our unit objectives. Something that we're gonna wanna make sure that we know how to do, right? We wanna be able to know what a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture is. That, again, has a, some of our vocab words there, right? Properties of our heterogeneous mixtures, properties uh, of our homogeneous mixtures, okay? So then we'll talk about our solubility, um, and that solubility is gonna tell us about our saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated solutions and how we can use a graph to actually understand what's happening with those solution, the solutions. Um, we'll be able to do some math with our concentrations, um, and then we also wanna know about one of those uh, effects of, of our concentration, okay? So those are our objectives. As we go through, right, you can read through this. As we go through, please pay special attention uh, to these objectives, okay? So we're gonna start right away getting some notes, okay? So these are some things that hopefully we have heard before, right? But if we've, we've talked about our mixtures before, right? It's a combination of two or more pure substances, okay? That can be separated by physical means, okay? So we talked about this at the beginning of the year, right? At the very beginning of the year, we talked about pure substances. Um, we talked about elements and compounds, right? We've talked about now our compounds, and we've kind of moved on here now where we're talking about our mixtures. So those mixtures, right, we can separate them by physical means. So that means if we were to draw a particle diagram, right, we've got something like this, right? That may indicate water, right? I've got lots of water molecules, and maybe I've got something else in there as well, okay? So if I've got something else, right, it is not touching, so it's not chemically bound. If it's not chemically bound, that means that we can separate it by physical means, okay? So we have a few different categories, right? Our first category would be our heterogeneous mixtures, okay? So a heterogeneous mixture, something like a suspension, right, it is clearly going to separate, okay? So it eventually separates upon standing. Um, the, the solid, if we have a solid and a liquid, it's, it really doesn't look like it is visibly dissolved in the liquid. It doesn't really break down. It's just there, okay? So our way to separate this would be to filter, okay? Whoops. F-I-L-T-E-R, there we go. So filter or um, filtering, right? Um, if we had something like sand and water, right, we would be able to separate that pretty easily. Um, another way to kind of think about a suspension, right, this would be something like, uh, or something molecular, similar to pasta in water. Okay, pasta, of course, is not a chemical compound. It's not a pure substance. But if we think of the pasta as uh, one substance and our water as a different substance, right, we're going to be able to filter off our pasta pretty easily. Okay, so something that we think about, right, we have relatively large particle sizes. Okay, then our second type of heterogeneous mixture is a colloid. Okay. So our colloids, right, the heter it's a heterogeneous mixture that does not separate very uh, upon standing. Does not separate, there we go. Um, it doesn't separate uh, upon standing, it doesn't settle, right? It's just kind of, it's gonna stay there, okay? We do have a way to separate it actually though, um, right? We can separate it essentially with forced gravity. So we force those particles, right, those bigger particles down and the little particles will stay up. The way that we actually most often do this is with a centrifuge. So a centrifuge, centrifuge, there we go, right? This is used uh, all the time in medicine. Um, so if you guys are thinking about going into uh, CNA or something like that, 
right? You would use a centrifuge to uh, separate something like blood, right? So if we have blood, we know that we actually have a mixture of these particles, but if you just have blood by itself, it's gonna stay there and stay mixed. But we can separate it with a centrifuge. Another uh, common example, right, would actually be milk, okay? So milk has these particles in there, but milk is just gonna stay there, right? It's, it can just sit in your fridge for a month and it's, it's not really changing. Maybe it has gone bad by that point, but you know, that's the, that may, it, it's just staying, okay? So we have a medium particle size here, okay? So it's not obvious that those particles are uh, totally separated, right? We, we can't see those particles, um, but, right, we are gonna be able to separate those particles with something like a centrifuge, okay? All right, on to the next page. So we've talked about our heterogeneous mixtures, right? Let's talk about our homogeneous mixtures, okay? This is a, uh, essentially a solution, okay? So we have a constant composition, meaning that it is uniform throughout, okay? So it is uniform all the way throughout. It looks like a, a, a clear solution, right? Uh, we, are, we are gonna be able to see through it. It is not opaque but it can be colorless or colored, okay? So it can be uh, totally clear, colorless. It could be totally clear that we can see through it, but it's a blue solution, right? Or maybe it's a uh, red solution, okay? So it can be colorless or colored, okay? But it has to be clear, right? We should be able to see through it, okay? So we have very small particle size, right? We're not gonna be able to see them, uh, and it, it, but it can actually exist in any phase, okay? So our most common phases are liquid, um, but we'll talk about uh, a couple of other examples in a second here, okay? So some examples of this, right? If we think about soda, right? Soda uh, or juice, um, we would think about having sugar in that water. So sugar, right, is dissolved in our water solution, okay? Another example would be coffee, okay? So coffee, again, uh, we should have that caffeine, some, of the, uh, some other compounds that are dissolved into our liquid, okay? So let's get some examples here, right? So some other uh, examples right? A specific one is actually an alloy, okay? So our alloys, this is a solution uh, where at least one of the materials is a metal, okay? We generally think of, uh, generally, right, we think about it as two metals mixed together, okay? So we have two different types, a substitutional alloy and, and, and an interstitial alloy. Uh, we'll talk about these next year in AP if you want to uh, continue with this, but we're not gonna talk too much about it right now, okay? So the only thing that we're gonna say about it, right, are metals arranged in an alternating pattern, pattern with uh, a sea of electrons that kind of hold them together, okay? Uh, some examples, right, we could think of brass or we could think of steel, okay? But we're not gonna talk too much about that in here, okay? So our solutions, right, one type would be an alloy, right? Now let's talk about uh, on our solutions, uh, sorry, our homogeneous mixtures, we have alloys, but now let's focus on solutions, okay? All right, on to the next page there, right? We've talked about, right, our solid-solid mixture, right? That would be an alloy, okay? Now, let's kind of think more about our solid, liquid, and gas, okay? So a solid, if we have a solid that gets dissolved in a liquid, right? This would be something, like we just said, sugar water, which is basically our soda, right? Sugar water, um, maybe uh, you think of apple juice, something like that. It's clear, if we think about apple juice, it's kind of yellow, but we have a solid that is dissolved in a liquid, okay? So it takes on the phase of our uh, solvent, okay? We're gonna talk about that solute and solvent in a second here, okay? So if we have then a liquid 
dissolved in a liquid. This would be something uh, that your, your parents might buy, right? Alcohol in water. Okay, this would be an example where we have alcohol that is going to be the, the smaller part that is going to be dissolved in our water, okay? What about a gas dissolved in a liquid? If we have a gas dissolved in a liquid, an example of this, right, I really like drinking bubbly water. Bubbly water, we have carbon dioxide that is dissolved in our water, okay? So that's our, that would be uh, a solution where we have a gas dissolved in a liquid, okay? The last part that we could talk about, right, we could think about a gas dissolved in a gas. That's going to be uh, something like our atmosphere. Um, and, th and so uh, because we have two gases, it's just an overall gas mixture, okay? So we've been talking about, right, solids, liquids, or gases dissolved in other things. So let's talk about what's called our solute and solvent, okay? So a solute, this is the minor component of a solution. So the minor component of our solution, right, it is smaller. You'll notice that solute has, is fewer letters than our solvent, so that's going to help us uh, remember this. Right, our solvent is the major component. Okay, so these are the two things that make up our solution. Okay, most often in here, we're going to be talking about aqueous solutions. Okay, so an aqueous solution, right, that has water, or H2O, as the solvent, okay? So we can think about NaCl aqueous, right? This would be table salt dissolved in water, right? So it's kind of uh, salt water that we're making there, okay? So this is a uh, solution, okay? All right, I'm going to pause and come back in a second.